Hey everybody, time for another viewer submitted video. Sorry if this sounds a little ASMR-ish, it's because I'm actually in my office quite late at night and I'm trying not to wake anyone up. I could do with some sound deadening on that wall. Also, hay fever is absolutely destroying my throat. So, uh, please excuse me for these things, but anyway, uh, on the 18th of April, I asked you for your most ghetto fixes that you've done pictures uh, with a bit of a story about it. Now, ghetto fixes, if you don't know, are basically when you do something to fix a bike, which is just, it's it's wrong, but it works. Um, it can sometimes be a temporary repair, it can sometimes be a long-term repair. Uh, I'll bring up the face of my 125 Pulse um, Betty that I zip tie stitched it together because I couldn't afford to replace the plastics and in the end it became an iconic thing that people knew the bike for. And uh, her face is currently sat above me on the wall like Frankenstein, it just will not die. Uh, <laughs> As you're showing me all your ghetto repairs, I'm going to do the same thing and show you all of mine at the end of the video, or at least the ones I can find pictures of. So keep watching for that. Okay, well the first post is the obligatory, here's a picture of my bike rather than actually doing the thing I asked. Thanks Curtis, very nice bike and all, but not helpful. Once saw a guy who had a flat tyre and filled it with car tyre slime and then carried on driving it. Can't remember the name though. Sounds like a silly, stupid idea to try and use any of that stuff in your, in your bike tyres. Um, you can watch my video on it, it's on my channel. Temporary ghetto fix on the project bike does the job though. So you've split. what are these? These look like some sort of quick splicing solder free connection jobby type thing. I, ha I have tried those. Uh, well, they're not they're, well, the instant solder ones you can like, you're supposed to do without a lighter uh, or a soldering iron. It's supposed to, I, I don't like them. Yamaha XT125 uh, X frame and engine, the rest is various bits of other bikes and scrap metal. Okay, can't really see much in the picture. And it looks alright from that distance, painted black and all in shadow. The, the plate though, that just seems like a silly plate. But how does the swing arm not smack into that? I'm sure you're going to now say, it was fine, it didn't. But, just saying. Seller tape speed, I mean, d when I first read that I thought there was going to be one piece of seller tape, but instead they've actually wrapped the entire thing, that's pretty impressive. <laughs> Might not be classed as a repair, but don't have a top box and had to improvise. Okay, yeah, Great British Mountain Company. I don't think you can fit a mountain in that box. Repair to crossover pipe on my GPZ. Yeah, see, this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. <laughs> it's, it's always got to be like, but why? And the answer is probably money. It's like, I, I don't want to replace this pipe. I haven't got the money to do it right now. These clasps, uh, clasp clamps are about like two quid each and I've, or I might have had them anyway. Um, and we've got some exhaust bandage and we're just going to wrap it on and hope for the best. <laughs> Though my concern would be how close are those to the ground? Would it not have been safer to have them in line? But whatever. Yep, that is indeed a ghetto repair. Uh, same as above, not really a ghetto repair, but certainly a ghetto way of transporting luggage. In this case, a base. Oh, yes, I can see now. I was like, is this thing shoved in a bag? No, it is an entire base. Couldn't you put that on your back? Wouldn't that be easy, easier? Don't they have like shoulder straps? I don't know. 1995. That's again just a picture of someone's bike, isn't it? I don't see any ghetto repairs there. I think probably should just stop posting pictures when people do that and then the people hopefully will stop doing it. The duct tape headband to stop water from getting behind the headlight and lots of beer cans used to seal holes and cracks in the exhaust. Yeah, beer can or exhaust pipe, I've got that going on. Although I think it might be Red Bull, so you know, it just makes the bike a little bit peppier. Is this also garden string to hold the kickstand up? Oh no, no, not garden string for the kickstand up, because that's just dangerous if that snaps. That's, yeah, that's a proper get out of repair. The duct tape bike can kind of, yeah, but the string, it's a step too far. My get out of repair was a 16 year old me trying to make an intake for my 70cc four stroke scooter. The pipe was a Dyson vacuum cleaner hose. Although I didn't have the money to buy a new airbox, it was pretty bodged up and worked a treat. Defo not a, a looker, but it was a fu- I can't say any more than that. I feel like I've seen this on a few bikes, scooters. I mean, 
it must have just ingressed so much stuff into the engine, but at least it had an up an uphill for the water. <laughs> Cable ties can fix anything. Yeah, it's fixing up a little indicator repair. What's this one here? What I what is even what and what is happening in this image? I can't even quite work out why. Okay. I think this may have been the worst I have seen. Survival of the fittest. Sometimes my dad's bike was held together with duct tape by the time it was scra uh, scrapped. Yeah, duct tape will do a lot for you. Um, I've seen this done several times. The idea being, you know, it will help hold the pin in. And no, not. I don't think a zip tie is going to do a lot. Um, wire, but wound wire because you've got little grooves. Yeah, that might work better. This one, however, uh, what exactly is that doing? Because there is a plate, or well, there should be a plate, and if there isn't a plate, dear God. But even if there wasn't a plate, this was going to go straight in there and it's going to snap that instantly. So, well, there must be a plate because there's pins. So, yeah, that's holding this on. But this one here... Uh, yeah, that's just going to get cut in half like that the second it comes down. <laughs> Doesn't look like it's scraped it, so I can't imagine this has done a rotation yet. <laughs> but at least they didn't trim off the zip tie like a psychopath. Not my doom, but the guy before me owning the FZR desperately tried to get this bike going. This is a fraction of the cut and splice jobs I found. Ordered a new loom. Screwed, uh, screw trying to sort this one. Why would you put a splice in here and here? Well, I suppose... It's the same cable, right? What on earth? Yeah, I, I would have got a new loom as well. <laughs> uh, dropped my XJ6 outside of work about eight months ago and cracked the fairing and broke some of the fittings. Um, since fairings aren't cheap, it was a case of duct tape to the rescue. I wonder how much panels are for the XJ6. I have never, touch wood, I have never dropped my XJ6. In the whole time I've owned it, I've never done it. Not even come close. Touch wood again. DRZ a million times, but not that bike for some reason. Um, but it has got the, I've got a decent crash cage on it, so hopefully if it does go over, uh, it, it should it should rest on that cage. I hope. Not mine, but made me laugh. Driving torque at top speed, more or less teeth. I was told to remove some teeth on the rear sprocket. Oh god, no, this has to be a joke. I was told to remove some teeth on the rear sprocket for a high top speed. Process. That has to be a joke. Please, please tell me that's a joke. <laughs> hey, Deathstalker. If you are interested in motorcycle racing and stuff like that and you want to hear some interesting stories and things, check out Deathstalker. He's a vlogger um, on YouTube. Very interesting guy. Good, reliable source of information if you want to know some things as well at times. Um, yeah, this is just that wooden bike that was made. Um, I wouldn't say it was a ghetto repair. I would say it was built for the reason of being what it is. In cable ties we trust, and there is cable ties and cable ties. Yep, cheap fairings, broken off bits and stuff. I see the cable ties coming out a lot. <laughs> Replace the front sprocket on my Suzuki Jix 1000 for one extra tooth. So much smoother and the speedo is more accurate. That's not a ghetto repair. When I first got my bike it had been in the shed for nine years. The last owner was a Muppet and the rear brake pedal was held on with a six inch rusty nail. Amazingly, the toolbox behind the side panel had three more rusty nails, obviously in case the first one fell out. Now, yes, it's a ghetto repair, but he did the right thing, which is have extra to fix it for when it does break again. But my God. <laughs> Cable tie stitches on the mud guard, my legs motor trend in green, uh, green liner. Yep, classic. They are absolutely fantastic. If you don't want to fix something don't try and plastic weld it. It never works for long. Zip tie stitches. And if you want to make them even stronger, do crossovers. Not my repair, but someone I know, he actually sold it to some bloke called Jank. <laughs> right, um, yeah, this is a video called New Bike for the Garden Snake. If you've never seen it, go and watch it. It was a joke from after my bike crash, and I was convinced, because Jake was looking for a new bike, and I was like, this is what you need. Um, yeah, I'm not going to spoil it too much. Go and watch it. It was pretty funny. But for people who have seen it, do you remember the line about Wi-Fi? <laughs> exhaust wrap over a hole in the exhaust. Not proud of my work. Well, enough until I can get it. I'll get the pipe this week. Um, 
Yeah, I mean, if you put, you could wrap some like beer can under there and stuff and like clamp that down. That would that would help a little bit. But yeah, for for a few days, eh, that's fine. That's that's a good getter repair. I don't mind that one. Uh, best fix I did was a plug pin from a DVD player to fix my broken clutch cable so I could get home from work. Literally forgot about the fix as it never broke again. Right, so what's got? Oh, I see what you've done. Now that's bloody genius. Where did you? Why did? Why did you have a DVD player with? Best thing, I assume you had one out and about, but if not, I think that's one worth remembering. Actually, no, seriously, because that is a that is a part which will do the job relatively well. It's very similar to what you use in the universal kits, and also they're easily available. Um, they're everywhere and they're cheap, so that's worth remembering. I'm pretty proud. I think that's a clever one. I, I, yeah, I can't quite see that just looks like mud to me or slip or am I just being blind? But okay <laughs> Well, there we go. Thank you for submitting those. There's a few uh, There's a few in there that I think are quite interesting and that one with the plug top marks for that I think that's a really ingenious idea of uh, finding a solution to a problem Okay, well as you showed me your getter repairs. It's time to show you mine I'm going to show you all of the old images I can find of repairs that I've done and the story behind them. So here we go. Number one, this here is the inside of a panel on my Pulse Adrenaline 125. Uh, because these were the very cheap, um, non-flexible plastics that used to break on their own anyway, constantly. Uh, it was one of my biggest gripes with the Pulse. Uh, and one of the reasons I was very happy that when Lexmoto listened to me, when it came to like updating the Adrenaline, that they did this. Because Pulse and Lexmoto were the same company. Anyway, so this is epoxy resin an aluminium plate to reinforce a hole on a broken connector. You're going to see a recurring theme here. Okay, so we have another broken one, which has now got, that appears to be a rubber washer maybe, that I've, I have uh, epoxied in. Again, I was in a scenario, I could not afford to replace these bits, and I just had to be like, well, do my best. This isn't really a ghetto repair, but I was filming, I think it's my one or 2,000 subscriber special, I needed to get that camera to stay still, it wouldn't stay still, so I shoved a stick in the hole to make up the space to make the clamp work. I still have this stick. That's the only reason I'm showing this. It's not really a repair, but yeah. Uh, yep, that got smashed. That got fixed. There it is fixed. I was proud. Uh, <laughs> we've evolved. Uh, we're not using epoxy anymore because I've discovered that epoxy in the cold became brittle and in the summer became soft and it just never worked. So then I went to riveting uh, and as you can see here I made a plate, drilled a hole, riveted it through and this repair worked a lot longer than the last one, the, the old epoxy. But nearly every panel on my pulse eventually had something like this holding it on. Um, <laughs> so of course this is from the thumbnail. This <laughs> This, as I've earlier mentioned, was from the video of a uh, new bike for the Garden Snake. Poor Betty, she was really abused after her death. By the way, that's another getter repair. You'll know um, that when I broke my front fender, rather than replacing it, I just turned it backwards uh, and had it really small. But why does it seem... Oh, it's because the headlights were gone. But yeah, that used to... that, that I had did have a front... Uh, the rear section of a front fender sticking out for a long time and I got mud in my face continuously But it looked cool and people loved it and I was like yeah, it's just snapped in half and I reversed it Jake in, in fact himself is the one who suggested I do that all those years ago. I mean look what does that say? Um, hold on. I'll get back to that. Oh Look now there's towel in here because that held some of the electric still that stopped them jiggling around so much uh, and causing problems. I totally forgot about that towel. Yeah, you can see this is some of the broken um, fairing mark. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how that's even there. I must have just wedged it on but uh, after, but it was bolted on properly before. Uh, 2013. I mean, the fact it's got a tax disc is one thing, but 2013, god damn. Uh, there you go. You can see more of the, uh, the aluminium plates that were holding the fairing on. Okay, this one was a common fault that happened with the Sinus Apache, and it seemed to happen with the Pulse as well, is that in the indicator switch, there is a ball. This ball, this spring, this piece of plastic. The spring belongs in here with the ball, and the plastic belongs on the top, and the, pl uh, the ball is a detent. But when it gets all gummed up, which it will, 
uh, it will eventually break off the top of here <clears throat> and all the ball will fall out. The way that I found a solution to this was to put use a one of the brass coloured BBs you use in uh, BB guns, the little metal ones, uh, like a G, uh, G10, if any of you know what air pistol that is. Pea shooter, but it, yeah, those little those little steel balls, um, or copper coated balls, what they are, yeah, those they used to fit perfectly and do the job because they were just a bit bigger. But yeah, that was a that was a big pain in the ass. Uh, this was just from my old work. Uh, it was a chip which had a smiley face on it, and it made me happy, so I took a picture of it. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, remember to hit that like button. If you'd like to take part in one of these in the future, join my Facebook and my Facebook group. Uh, and if you'd really like to help my channel out, please consider joining my Patreon for as little as a dollar a month. You get videos early, uh, you get to be part of the Q&As, all sorts of other cool stuff like that. So if you'd like to do that, please check out the links in the description. But otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe to see future videos. This channel is made possible by the support of the audience. Please consider joining my Patreon to get early access to videos, questions answered in the monthly Q&A, your name on screen, and some exclusive content, all for as little as a dollar a month. You can also check out the links in the description to my merch and other ways to directly support the channel. Thanks for watching.